my primary issue, I think we could really just start that right here in the center. We have a situation where like in our source image, we have a really strong sense of shadow and light. And <laughs> this is going to get um, maybe to a place where you're sick and tired of hearing about this sphere. But we look at that nose, for instance, we have that light kind of coming in from the upper left hand side. Uh, naturally, we have our center light here on the left. And I think we see that kind of reflected in this drawing as well. We have our specular highlight sitting at the edge of that specular highlight sitting at the edge of that. What's actually missing on this nose is a, is a relatively clear and definitive shadow edge, right? We're definitely getting darker as we get over to the right hand side of the form. But I wouldn't say that that we have there this kind of observable boundary, this core shadow that says or, or announces to the viewer and to to the artist that here, this is where we've kind of begun the shadow, right? Um, so one of the first things that I would do with this drawing is really start to install something that better resembled a proper shadow edge. And I'm going to go ahead uh, and just indicate that here a really well kind of honed shadow edge. It's a little bit of air in it. Uh, this is the way that I describe it. What we're talking about really is uh, um, we're not really filling the holes of that edge. We're kind of letting that breathe just a little bit. Um, but now let's look at the nostril on the right hand side of the nose, that nostril on the left hand side of the nose. Um, what I'm not seeing reflected in the values applied to the nostrils is that this nostril on the right hand side is actually turning away significantly from the light source. And therefore the values that we have on the nose right now are actually communicating a relatively flat form. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to indicate with some nice, dark, rich halftone value, the turning of form that is taking place between the left and right side of the nose. Now, it's not enough just that we add value to the nose, we have to think about what the value of the nostril on the left hand side actually looks like, right? We actually have some value there, because we have this highlight in the center, and we have this uh, higher key plane in the, the, the top plane of the nose, this already has to be a little bit darker than what the top plane is. That means, of course, that when we get over to this right hand side, you know, logic kind of dictates that if this is turned even further away from the light source, we need to have an even darker value there to kind of justify its orientation to the light source. We keep that cast shadow just a half value step darker than the form shadow on the nose itself uh, in order to kind of communicate this uh, ambient occlusion idea, right? That, that all of us are, are very familiar with how light cannot get in underneath the nostrils. Um, and so naturally they will be a little bit darker gradating outward towards being slightly lighter uh, and the rest of the body of the cast shadow. Uh, that will then make the form shadow look like a little bit lighter and we get a nose that really kind of projects outward from there. So you can see here, uh, based on the values that we have, I would say the nostril on the, the right hand side uh, is literally almost lighter than the one on the left. Um, the cast shadow edge and the form shadow edge really relatively soft, incredibly soft in fact, um, whereas here we kind of punctuate them uh, with a little bit more intense edges. Uh, and that gives us that kind of stronger sense of shadow and light that probably reflects a little bit more the actual appearance that we have uh, here on our model, Jamal. Now, another thing about this one, and this one, this is going to be subtle. What we have here is a really well drawn eye, like really nice. Like I love the, the, the subtlety of it, the structure of it, the design of it. The area that leaves me a little bit um, less impressed actually uh, is the depth of the eye socket itself, right? Uh, so we've got to remember, where's the light coming from? The light is coming from above. And what do we know about the eye sockets? The eye sockets turn downward, right? Like the forehead faces upward, the eye sockets turn downward. Uh, so naturally, we're going to expect to find in there some darker values inside the eye socket. Uh, and the moment that we start to kind of darken that down, we're actually going to get the depth of the eye socket that we need. It's going to make it feel like the face has form. You can see those eye sockets kind of deepening back into the face. That's what we're looking for, right? A couple more things uh, about this drawing in general. Something that happens right here that uh, for those of you who have studied with me one on one, you understand I talk about this constantly. Uh, in my tutorials, I talk about this all the time. This is one of those instances where the precise thing that I'm always talking about has a little bit of a kind of wiggle room, right? I'm always saying how 
uh, you think that you have a rule about nature, of a rule about how things are supposed to look, and then you, you go to nature, you go to your subject, and immediately you find that there is an exception to that rule. Um, I'm always talking about how at the edges of turning forms, right? If we have the center light here, we get out to the edge of that form, we shouldn't find light values poking up out of that edge. It kind of breaks the transition, it breaks the illusion of form. But what do we have here on Jamal, except for when I squint down, like a little bit of a whisper, of like a lighter value right at the contour uh, of like the shape, uh, the light shape of his forehead. Uh, so what do we do in that instance? I think that you have to follow what you see. Of course, you always do. Um, as I look at this though, the lightness at that edge is not uniform. When we get down to this passage here, I would say that that lightness at the edge has diminished to such an extent uh, that I can go ahead and add that slightly darker value um, to the edge that gets that form to kind of turn around very slightly, right? Just wanna make sure as much as possible it. I'm giving myself the opportunity to tell the story of volume and roundness and form. This kind of story gets kind of retold a little bit down here at the jawline, right? Where I love a good contour line, but I also want that contour line always to, um, to not interrupt necessarily the sense of roundness or volume, uh, which is definitely what's happening as we get down here. Let's look at like this area in particular, right? Because what do we see happening along the contour here? we see this major angle break, right? This is not just one like, you know, curved line or whatever. Uh, this is a, a kind of angle break occurring. And when an angle break is occurring, we have to think that, that what we're seeing at the exterior is reflected in the values that we find in the interior, right? Uh, the, thing, the, the diagram I like to make for students is to actually bring this out so we can see what kind of plane shift we're actually looking at there. Right? So if we know that we have light kind of coming in from above, naturally, this plane down here is going to receive like a little bit less light. And so as we come down here again, we should be receiving that, that little bit less light that's going to help indicate you know, what, that, what that contour is kind of alluding to. So let's take a quick look at the impact that that's going to have. Uh, so you can see that extra little bit of volume kind of produced right, by that extra value that we're kind of adding in. To the, uh, to the contour. One more thing that I wanna mention about this drawing, I wanna think about the volume of the, of the mouth, uh, not only of the, the lips itself, but of that whole area around the mouth, right? So is when we get over to like the right-hand side of this, we have like a compound darkness, right? We have the curvature of the face, which is darkening as it gets uh, over to the right. And then we have a curvature of the lip, which is turning inward from that. So it's a kind of like, uh, it's kind of doubling down on the darkness of the turn of the face. Over here on the left-hand side, that's reflected as uh, the, uh, the down-facing plane of the upper lip uh, being a little bit dark, while the uh, up-facing plane of the muzzle form uh, through here is a little bit lighter, right? Now, what we're not really seeing in this drawing in particular is that, that double-down kind of darkness effect where the entire right-hand side as a whole, right, is darker along with the kind of darkening of the, uh, of the upper lip as well. Got to remember also, that outside corner of the mouth, uh, that's where we have these little muscular nodes, right, that are sitting at the outside corners of the mouth. Um, and this little volume creates a transition into, right, a darkening transition into the outside corner of the mouth. Um, and this is one of the kind of key ways uh, in which we make sure that the mouth does not look a little bit pasted on, you know, if you ever get that feeling like that the, the features of your face uh, are not really attaching to the, to the head that they're, that they're placed onto, um, it's these forms that kind of lead in and out of them uh, that make a really big impact on, uh, on how they kind of integrate into the areas that they're, they're being drawn on, right? I'm going to do that same thing actually on this right-hand side. I just need to grab a dark enough value. Let's take a look at what this does to the kind of impression of the mouth. And you can see how that mouth kind of integrates a little bit more into the kind of surroundings that it has. Overall, uh, I think, as I said, you know, just for starters, really cool drawing. Uh, there's several maybe fundamental things that, uh, that you want to, what's the word, that you want to dodge, right? Um, by kind of making sure you, you give care to your shadow edges, uh, that you give the proper attention to the halftones that kind of attach the features to the head.